to another episode of Liz and Liam. Listen. Welcome back to our segment. Um, for those of you that are new, my name is Liz and I teach voice and piano here at RMC. And I'm Liam. I teach piano, guitar, and drum. So this is our monthly segment that we offer to you, the RMC community, to answer any questions that you guys might have. So if you have any music-related questions for us about the music industry or about um, going to school for music, if you want some more practice tips and tricks, you can always submit questions to us in our email that I'll provide here below, or you can submit questions through any of our social media platforms. We're on Instagram. Facebook and Twitter. You know, we do this segment because uh, many times when your child's at a lesson, you want to talk to us, and we don't really have a lot of time to really get into things, so this is your opportunity to ask us questions about what your child can do at home or just music in general. This month, our question came from a parent uh, here at RMC, Marcy Paul. Marcy's daughter takes voice lessons here, and Marcy also used to do some singing herself. So she was asking me about how she could better uh, sing connecting her chest voice to her head voice without causing any vocal fatigue or strain. I know that this uh, question seems like it's specifically geared towards voice, but uh, the answer is actually applicable to all instruments. And the answer is that you need to warm up. You need to warm up your body. We use our body to, uh, to play our instruments or in the instance of voice you know, your body is your instrument. And so taking the time to really warm everything up is what will help with your playing and with your practice. To add to what Liz said, warming up uh, will help for any kind of instrument. And part of warming up would be stretching. So I actually thought it would be a really good idea to bring you into my voice studio to better answer Marcy's question about blending the head voice and the chest voice. But what we're actually talking about when we're talking about blending our head voice and our chest voice is we're actually talking about coordinating the muscles that control our lower pitches and our higher pitches. So we have two main muscles that control pitch in the voice box. The actual technical term for the voice box is called the larynx. The first one is the body of the vocal folds. This muscle is called the thyroarytenoid muscle. What the thyroarytenoid muscle does is it slackens the vocal folds and makes them thick. Just like if you were tuning your guitar string and you loosened it, it would create lower frequencies. Now, on the other side of that, we have the cricothyroid muscle. The cricothyroid muscle actually takes the voice box and tilts it forward and stretches the vocal folds long and thin. Just like on a stringed instrument, the longer and thinner you have your strings, the higher the frequency is going to be. When I'm talking to my students about this, it's a little technical to talk about muscles. So another way that I like to talk about it is in terms of color. I like to talk about our chest voice or our lower notes being a deeper shade of red. You know, they're rich and sultry. And then our higher notes that we associate with our head voice being light and airy and more like the color blue. However, when we're singing, and especially when we're warming up, I like to have my students imagine that they have different shades of purple. Now, some exercises that I like to start my younger students off with um, to find this, these shades of purple include lip drills. So for those of you who don't feel like you can do lip drills, an easy modification that I like to start with my students is called the tongue hum. The tongue hum is simply just a hum with your tongue in between your lips. And I usually start on a higher note and work my way down to stretch the folds long and thin and then to let them relax. Right, so for lip drills, I usually like to do a similar pattern to what I just did for the tongue hums, starting with a higher note and working my way down. If you're having trouble with these, it's all right. Take your fingers and put up guards on just the corners of your mouth. I, I call these lip guards um, and they just sometimes help give you the support you need to get the lip drill going. Again, what we're doing with these two exercises is we're stretching the folds and then relaxing them. But we're doing so in a minimally invasive way. We're doing it in a way that gives us a deep stretch, but it doesn't really require a ton of effort. So like Liam and I were talking about before, all of this goes into taking time to warm up your body. For any activity, you wanna make sure that you're taking the time to properly stretch and warm up the muscles so that you don't cause any additional strain. So I'm also going to provide some links for some of the more detailed stuff that I wasn't able to get into in this video below. So if you have any more interest in learning more about the different muscles that control pitch, 
in the voice or the different ways that your vocal tract can affect the voice or how you can better breathe for singing. These are all things that I'll get provide some more information with below. All right, everyone, that has been an episode of Liz and Liam Listen. We are so happy to answer any of your questions. So if you have more of them, please send them to the email below or on any of our social media platforms. All right, thanks guys. See you next time.